Okay, it is 7 o'clock. We will call to order the regular meeting of the Trinity County Planning Commission, April 23rd, 2020. Right. Um, first item on the agenda will be approval of meeting minutes from meetings held on January 9th. 2020 and March 19th of 2020. Excuse me, you should do a real call to know who's on the phone. Okay, that would be for our commissioners that are on the phone. Right. That would be good to know. Um, Commissioner Stewart, are you with us on the phone? I am. Okay, thank you. And Commissioner McHugh, are you with us? On? Yes, sir, I am here. All right, thank you. And that will be everyone is all the commissioners are present now i lost my paperwork all right so back to minutes does anyone we'll start with the january 9th minutes um any changes revisions yeah. Yeah. I, um, my name is Sheldon Bradley. And the commissioner is present via telephone. Am I in the right minute? Actually, in both of them. My name, my first name is Sylvan Presley. There's only one N in Diana. Thank you. Uh, point of order. Point of order. This is Jeff Hawkins. Um, I'm wondering if the public comment is going to come before the minute. Uh, I guess. Uh, it, yes, it could have, I guess. My agenda, sorry, I guess public comment could have, should have came four minutes. Um, sure. Yes. Uh, my phone dropped out and I'm coming back. Have we, we moved beyond the minutes yet? No, sir. We're actually, I've kind of messed up on this meeting already. We had a point of order from Justin Hawkins that I skipped the public comment period before I went to minutes. So, to, to address... Okay, this, is, this is Margaret Long, County Council. You're fine to you just keep going forward um, and you can, make, you can do public comment after this item. That's what I was hoping to do. So thank you very much. Okay. All right, well, we've had... Um, Commissioner Stewart has addressed a uh, misspelling of her name in the, in the minutes from... January 9th and and March 19th also um, in the January 9th minutes anything else okay on the, yes Commissioner McHugh uh, okay uh, we need somebody to mute and can you try that again Commissioner McHugh because you're being drowned out background noise yes sir uh okay. uh Director Hunter, if you're on the line listening, um, if you could mute, if you're not speaking, um, until public comment, please. All right, Commissioner McHugh, we're going to have to have you try that again. We're having still having a hard time hearing. Uh, start with the page number that you're looking at. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yes. Second to last sentence, where it says that I suggest that, uh, what the sentence says, that I explained that we need to review it as a whole and recommend denial. I don't think I recommend a denial. I want to clarify that. I went back and reviewed the video, and what I said was that we were discussing at the time how to handle all three sections of that item that was a sequel a rezone and a CUP. And I think I suggested that uh, we were discussing how to do it if we're going to have a CUP after we don't do a rezone. And what I said was 
if the rezone is denied, then the commission could recommend denial of the CDP based on any kind of zoning. It was a hypothetical. I was not at that time recommending the early meeting that there be a denial. Okay. Staff, did you get that? So we can make a correction there. Um, and then I did also have in the on page two of the January 9th meeting, my name is also misspelled in the sixth paragraph. Okay, did you have anything else, Chairman or Chairman Commissioner McHugh, on January 9th? accept the minutes for January 9th meeting as amendment amended. Okay, we have I'll second that. Motion and a second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Roll call vote. Thank you. I vote Roll aye. Call vote. Chair, you have to chair you have to poll them individually. You can't okay. 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 So let's see. I will start with Commissioner McHugh. How do you vote? I vote aye. And okay, and do you, do you, and Chair Fra uh, Chair Fraser, how do you vote? Aye. Okay. And it's Stewart. Okay. Now, Chair Stewart, how do you vote? Commissioner Stewart. Okay. Commissioner Stewart, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. And Commissioner McHugh, how do you vote? Uh, I vote aye. Commissioner Howard and Commissioner Matthews. Okay. Yeah. Commissioner Howard, how do you vote? Aye. Okay. Commissioner Matthews, how do you vote? Aye. Okay. We'll try to make that a little smoother on the next one. Um, before we'll go ahead and finish the March 19th minutes. So, um, do we have any changes or corrections to the March 19th minutes? Just add the correction to my name. Okay. It's my name. All right, and Commissioner McHugh, anything on? March 19th? No, sir, I saw nothing there. Okay. From you, Commissioner Hort? You can. Yes, I will make a motion to approve the minutes as amended for the meeting, special meeting on March 19th, 2020. We have a motion. Can we get a second? I will second McHugh. All right, motion and a second. Richard Ward, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner. Commissioner McHugh, how do you vote? 
Aye. Chair Frazier, how do you vote? Aye. Jack, Commissioner Stewart, how do you vote? Aye. And Commissioner Matthews, how do you vote? Uh, I will abstain since I was not present. Okay. All right, now that we've gone through the minutes, um, we will open public comment for this public comment period is for matters that <clears throat> are within the jurisdiction of the Planning Commission, which are not listed on the agenda tonight and that may be agendized for a future meeting. Um, so do we have anyone who would like to address, address the Planning Commission on during the public comment period? I would like to. Okay, we have one in the audience. Um, for items not on the agenda? It's oh, not on the agenda. Not for on items not on the agenda. Okay, do we have any... Uh, we have... Do we have someone on the phone that's trying to talk, or...? Okay, could you uh, state your name again if you'd like to have a hard time hearing? John Brower. Oh. Go ahead. Uh, I'd just like to comment that uh, um, it's, uh, it's nice that you guys are all trying to do this um, over whatever technology we've got available, but it's awfully awkward plus ways to do a public hearing, and most of Trinity County has no internet access, very little phone communication, and so I'd just like to encourage the commissioners and staff to um, you know, if necessary, put off public hearings uh, until we can do it in a more proper way. Um, and that's, uh, that's really all I want to say here at the beginning. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, this is Justin Hawkins from Hayport. Go ahead. Um, hello. Thanks for everyone joining tonight. Um, I realize this is complicated situation and not easy to deal with. Um, I want to quickly echo the last speaker's comments and that I'm having a hard time hearing all the commissioners right now from my end and I think that public participation is difficult under these conditions for a public meeting. So uh, I appreciate the delay for the removal of certain items on the agenda that were controversial um, because I think it's not going to be possible to fairly hear um, the situation or these conditions. Um, well, I have a few moments left. I also wanted to just reiterate some comments from last time I uh, presented to the commission about the new chapter in the EIR that we're supposed to be seeing called environmental commitment. And I think it's not well understood just how much of our licensing fees for cultivation go to basically um, these environmental commitments are used to offset cumulative impacts from our program. The main example, of course, is the large chunk of our Trinity County licensing fees that goes to Trinity County Code Enforcement. That's, to, that's actually to enforce and to mitigate and remove illegal cultivation sites across the whole county. And that goes, an entire, it goes a long way to reducing cumulative impacts, um, that's for sure. Um, but beyond just that one, there's also, of course, the water board enrollment, which under the North Coast program was $2,500 a year, and now it's about an average of $1,200 a year, but the majority of that money also goes to enforcement action and it provides money for the water board to have an enforcement team. Um, there's, of course, also the Lake and Stream Alteration Agreement through Fish and Wildlife, and those are um, those contain additional fees, specifically cultivation, between three and five thousand dollars each, that go to the enforcement team for fish and wildlife. So uh, I just want uh, to maybe bring those things to attention to the commissioners. And there's a whole lot more to go on the topic, but there's no doubt that commercial cannabis was birthed into CEQA. It wasn't existing before CEQA, and it thinks now that these um, requirements for licenses are not part of our 
environmental commitment. Well, I, I, you know, that, that's, that's, I think, an inaccurate way of looking at it, and I hope that the new chapter of the EIR will reflect the true nature of our commitment. Um, I appreciate everyone's time. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anyone else that would like to public to make public comment during this time? Okay, hearing none, we will move on to agenda item number two. Staff. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, Commission members, and members of the public. My name is Lisa Lozier. I am the Deputy Director of Planning for Trinity County, and I will be presenting agenda item number two. It is a conditional use permit P19-19 for uh, Best Development Group. Um, earlier today, a memorandum was prepared for Planning Commission by staff, and that memo reads as follows. Dear Commission members, Several letters of concern have been received by planning staff in regard to Agenda Item 2, Conditional Use Permit P-19-19 for Best Development Group. In order to review and to respond to the letters received, staff is recommending that Conditional Use Permit P-19-19 be continued to the regularly scheduled May 14, 2020 Planning Commission meeting. Staff recommends that the Planning Commission take the following action, which is open the public hearing and close the public hearing and make a motion to continue agenda item two, conditional use permit P-19-19 to the regularly scheduled May 14, 2020 Planning Commission meeting. Thank you. Okay. Um, at this time, do we do we have an applicant or agent to speak for this agenda item? Um, if, I they say that again, please. I, I was actually asking a question to staff. Uh, we do have, have, have for uh, is, is my mic working? I have to Okay. Um, no, Kim, it's not working. We cannot hear you. Okay, thank you. How about now? Is that better? Yes, slightly. Slightly, okay. Um, there may be an applicant on the line. Um, we do have property owner for the site, but um, the applicant, uh, due to the memo and, and recommendation to continue, um, did not uh, travel up to the area okay. for the meeting. I just wanted to check. Yeah. If we had somebody waiting in the in the lobby before I open it up to public comment okay. on this item. Okay, so that noted, we will open the public comment on agenda item number two. It, it, would anybody like to comment on agenda item number two on tonight's um, agenda? Hello, can, Kelly Alby, Douglas City. Okay, um, can, can you hear me? Yes, um, can I, it sounds like there was someone trying to talk at the same time, so we will go. Yes, I'm sorry, that, that was me. This is Becky Deal. I will wait my turn and go second. Okay, thank you. So, Veronica Alves, you go ahead. I just sort of had a question on this continuance. Uh, does this mean that right now is the only time you're going to take public comment, or when it gets continued, I'm, I'm a little confused by the recommendation by staff as to how this process will work out. Um, if that could be clarified. We will take. Let me jump in. This is this is County Council. Let me clarify what's going on. Uh, the staff is recommending continuance. We're taking public comment regarding continuing it. Uh, the board will then the commission will then vote on whether it should be continued. If they vote not to continue it, then we'll take comment on the actual item thereafter. If they do continue it that at the next meeting is when the public comment will be open to discuss this specific issue. Thank you for that clarification. That's all I needed. Thank you. Okay, and Becky. Yes, thank 
you. Hi, this is uh, Becky Deal. I am an attorney with McKinley, Conger, Jolly, and Galarno. I wrote a letter of April 21st that I think was distributed, and I just wanted to say we are in support of the, of the proposed continuance, and thank you for the attention to the comments received. Thank you. Anyone else want, uh, would like to? This is Justin Hawkins from Hayport. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Hello, Commission. Um, good evening. Um, I'm also in support of the continuance of this item. I'm actually kind of, well, I, I'm not even sure how it got on the agenda ahead of the appeal, to be honest with you. That seems a little bit um, out of the ordinary. But also just the fast tracking of this application. Um, you know, it suggests to me that that if you ever, I just don't know how they were able to get such fast tracking and then skip to the front of the line and then be top of the agenda. So um, perhaps these aren't questions to be answered today, but I am in favor of continuing. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, this is uh, Terry Johnson, the applicant for Best Development Group. Yes, sir. Um, we are aware of the request to continue. Uh, the agenda items of May 14th. We will certainly abide by the commissioner's decision tonight. Uh, I will I will address the previous uh, caller, uh, our speaker. Uh, we started this. Please, please um, don't, ad sir. Please don't address others in the public. Only address the commission, please, sir. So this I. I this is not a fast track project. Point of order. We've been point of order. Please. This is unrelated. Um, those of you on the phone, please keep your comments and your uh, to the commission. Only address the commission. Please don't start to talk amongst yourself. Um, I have no way to control that, so you will have to control yourselves. Only address the commission, and and please don't address others, public commenters. So that's what I, that, this is Terry Johnson again, the applicant. That's what I was trying to do was address the commission. Okay. So we will abide by whatever your decision is tonight. Uh, we've been at this a long time, January of 2019. So we, we appreciate getting to this point and uh, hopefully we can have the hearing on May 14th. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Yes, this is George Bates from Lewiston. Uh, there go my peacocks, good timing. Uh, I'm also in favor of continuance. All right, thank you, sir. Is there anyone else on item two? Okay, hearing none. Um, we'll bring it back to oh, We have one in the audience. Thank you, sir. Stand up and... Good evening. My name is Dana Ryan, and I live in Weaverville. And uh, I am not affiliated with uh, Best Development or Grocery Outlet, but I am the landowner. And just to correct uh, one of the... Well, to inform you, they, they opened escrow August of 2018. And so there's no, been no fast track for this uh, process at all. In fact, I'm surprised they haven't pulled out on Trinity County. Um, it's been costly for them. They've, they've done at least, uh, at least four extensions and maybe five. And I really feel bad for them. Uh, either way, the, the, the land will still have its value, but they have been through quite a process. So there's, there's no, uh, nothing's been expedited for them. They've had um, some problems with, with maybe uh, you know the staffing through planning, and now we've got a great crew. Um, I'm hoping that you guys will streamline this. The zoning is correct. The um, fishing game didn't have any problems with it. The sequa is good. There's nothing stopping this. Uh, the zoning, the zoning is correct. The size of the building is what created this to come through you guys. And so I'm asking to, to take a look at it. There's not a better spot in town. They're not trying to get a zone change. And what a time to, to uh, really boost uh, Weaverville. We need to, to help this town. They're gonna employ people. Um, it, it's just gonna be a, a, fantastic, a fantastic thing uh, for Weaverville and Trinity County. And even if they, they got the okay 
starting now, it, it's still going to be quite a process just to even build this structure. So I'm just asking you, uh, uh, there, there's no roadblocks. And the only roadblocks that have come about is these attorneys that have now stood up. Within the last few days, we had no letters that came back. Even the church next door that doesn't complain about selling any type of alcohol products. Nobody has complained until the last few days to stall this. And I read through some of the, the comments that came through these letters. And it, it's a bunch of uh, attorney stuffing that's trying to, trying to slow this thing up. And I'm asking you to, to please do streamline it. There's nothing been streamlined for this company. And if I was running uh, the company that has it in escrow with me, which is Best Development, I'd pull out. I wouldn't put up with it. They, they build in other communities. They're building a lot of stores for grocery outlet. And uh, it, it's a needed thing for our community. I, I believe that they're going to probably employ not Best Development, but Grocery Outlet. And Best Development may hire locals, too, for, um, for our community to stimulate our community. And we. Let's face it, we need it. Let's get past this gimmick, I mean pandemic, that, that's got us closed down. People are not, they're, they're going to be out of business, and we need this more than ever. So I just want to thank you guys for listening, and good luck, best development. I hope it, I hope it goes great. Thank you. I appreciate it. Does that cut me off? Is that my time? I, I think that was someone on the phone, but I, I think your time is up also. Uh, What's uh, it up? Yeah, I, I believe so. Um, and well, thank save, you. save your comments on the for the future when we're actually when we're talking about whether or not to allow this to go through, rather than whether or not to continue it. Um, we will have a public comment period that will be more in depth. Um, on May 14th when this comes up. So, your, your time's up, you can set back down. I'm gonna ask one more time since I kept, did kept, keep public comment open if there's anyone on the phone who'd like to address agenda item number two before we close public comment. Uh, yes, if uh, you guys hear me, my name is Ilya and uh, um, it was very hard to hear the gentleman who was speaking to come. So I believe it would be much better to have the regular meeting when everything is crazy with the COVID-19 going on. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Okay, we'll return to the commission. Commissioners? Mr. Chairman, it's Mike McHugh. I will move that we continue this item to May 14th. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. I will second that, Commissioner Hort. Okay, we have a motion. A second. Richard Hort. Was the public hearing closed? Yes. Yes, I closed the public hearing. I apologize. Sorry. I should have closed the lottery. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Ward, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner McHugh, how do you vote? Aye. Chair Frazier, how do you vote? Aye. Chair Stewart, how do you vote? Or Commissioner Stewart, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Matthews, how do you vote? Aye. Okay, motion carries unanimously. We will move on to agenda item number three. Staff. Good evening, Kim. Okay, we've got music on the phone again. Good evening, Kim Hunter, uh, Director of Building and Planning. I'll be presenting this item this evening. This is a agenda item. We're on agenda item number three. Three. Okay. This is a. Oh boy, sorry, this such an odd situation. This is a appeal of the director's decision to uh, deny a variance application. 
the item is for a appeal to the director's decision to deny an appeal a variance to the type three licensing requirements for code. Okay, we have another speaker. Is that is that getting better for everybody on the line? Yes. Okay. Yes, the applicant for this uh, for the application and the appellant is American Cannabis Partners, ACP LLC. The project location is at 241 Drinkwater Gulch Road in the Hay Fork area. Assessor's parcel number 016-220-0200. The approximate acreage of the site is 23.86 acres. The zoning district is agricultural, 10 acre minimum. Abbreviated as A10. Zoning district overlay in the area is critical water resource, CWR and flood hazard, FH. General plan designation is agriculture. The staff's recommendation is to deny this appeal. A little background on the project. This appeal for a planning director's decision to reject an application requesting variances from the requirements established by the Trinity County Zoning Code Section 17.43.040 for the Type 3 Commercial Cannabis Cultivation License. The applicant is requesting three medium Type 3 one acre commercial cannabis cultivation licenses on a 23.86 acre parcel. Excuse me, could a person on the line put their phone on mute? If you're listening on the line, could you put your phone on mute, please? Uh, I'm sorry? Could you put your phone on mute, please, while you're, while the presentation's being given, please? Thank you. They've got the live streaming going. Somebody's, somebody's got the live streaming going and we're getting a, a lot of feedback um, over our phone system. Sounds like it's better now. Okay. This request was denied. <laughs> as as it does not it does not qualify for variance for numerous reasons, as outlined in the attached letter of denial dated February 27, 2020, attached to the staff report. And based on the provision of Trinity County Co Zoning Code Section 17.31.010 and California Government Code Section 65906. The, factor, the factors relating to the denial of the variance include that variances, as it outlined in county code, are, are a variance to a development standard. And in this case, the applicant is requesting variances for items that are criteria for the code rather than a development standard such as a height limitation or a setback, with the exception of a request for a 500 foot cultivation setback from the property line. This application is asking basically <coughs> that the code be waived uh, in many areas, including prioritization for 16, 17 license holders. Uh, there are only 15 licenses available for type three licenses, and those are prioritized based on the license number. Currently, each of those 15 slots is on hold while CUPs are being processed or will be submitted um, by a date in, in June. And so those will be opened up if we do not receive complete applications at that time. Still, the process is based on priority and the lowest numbers of licenses. So we don't have licenses available. The applicant does not meet the criteria regarding the 1617 license holding status and the number of license. Although, although ACP is a current license holder, they don't have that low number. Uh, also, to, to qualify, the parcel needs to be 50 acres in size. And this is just for one type one, type three license for one acre grow. Um, the request is for three. And then furthermore, uh, something to note on the variance. The variance was not applied for with a CUP application, a conditional use permit application, 
nor was it applied for with a uh, request for license. So we have almost a theoretical variance um, asking for um, exceptions be made to the criteria of code and not uh, without any project um, for that, uh, that accompanies the variance, which is a problem in itself. So among other things, the criteria of the codes not being met and also uh, there are questions about uh, special privilege, that this may be a special privilege asked by one person that could be asked by others. Um, but it is a special privilege. I would like to do this and, and have exceptions to the code in, in the light of a special privilege in their situation. Um, there's nothing that would stop others, um, you know, similar situations, however, from also requesting uh, this situation and in that event basically void uh, some critical elements of our code section. So uh, numerous concerns with this, uh, this variance request. And again, staff recommends, recommends that the um, denial of this uh, variance, um, that it be upheld. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody has their phone on speakerphone? And the light stream. Oh. That's what's causing that back then. Commissioner Stewart, go ahead. Whoever is on the phone, how to mute their phone because those of us who are on the commission trying to listen cannot hear a thing. Okay, we have someone on the phone with their phone on speaker and streaming the live feed. We need that to be stopped. It's uh, bringing the whole meeting to a halt. Shut down the live feed if you want me to. We could hang up the line and recall and restart it. They might not even know they left it on. Yeah. Another suggestion is continue. <coughs> yeah, we're going to have to do something. Um, we either, if you shut down the live stream and start it back up, will it kill that? Will it? Well, it'll. Then they got it. They've got it. Their phone, their phone has to be on mute or taken off the speakerphone, one or the other. But if you were to halt the meeting for that, it would no longer be a public presentation, correct? Well, the public presentation is over the phone, not, live, not the live streaming. So it's just accommodation for the live streaming. So. We depend on the, on the video. Yeah, so um, if, if you kill our phone system, then we'll be back all back. Uh, County Council, um, are you still out there? I am. Okay, we're having an issue trying to deal with this feedback. So, um, some can if we hang up the our end of the phone and ask people to call back in, will that be an option, or do I need to? continue all further items on the agenda and call this meeting because we can't um, operate in the way we're doing right now. What, what, what I'd recommend is that everybody hang up and call that in. Okay. Um, and then we'll see if that fixes the problem. All right. Well, I think we're going to have, um, we're going to hang up on our end too, and then we will restart the live feed. So. Um, I, I will I will call a five minute recess and we will readjourn at 742 or 744 make that all right. Okay, we are going to try this again. Um, I guess welcome back to the April 23rd. 2020 Planning Commission meeting of Trinity County. Uh, to begin with, uh, Commissioner Stewart, are you back on the line with us? Yes, I am. And Commissioner McHugh, are you on the line with us? Yes, sir, I'm here. Okay. Now we will go back to item number three on the agenda. Um, 
Remember, those of you on the phone, please keep your phone muted if you're not talking. Um, Director Hunter, do you would you like to go over anything again, or do you would you like me to open this to public comment? Yes, I would. I would like to clarify what I was trying to say previously. Where I had some some static is is regarding the special privilege associated with variances. So so. Um, what I was trying to say is if this variance was granted to ACP, uh, then that would be considered a special privilege unless applied to others. And, and so thus, it would basically invalidate the criteria and the requirements of the code section um, as it, it just creates a precedence, a very dangerous precedence of, of not following the code. Um, well, we do hope in the future, once our environmental impact report is uh, certified and we can amend ordinances, that there may be a better process. In the meantime, we do need to stick to the criteria and the requirements that are codified and, and in place right now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, with that, um, we will open public comment on agenda item number three. I just want to note that the applicant is, is present. Okay. Um, would the applicant like to step to the podium and speak? Yes. No? Okay. You're, more, you're welcome to. Thank you, sir. Um, first and foremost, uh, thank you, Ms. Hunter. Um, I wanted to ask if the uh, planning committee actually received the exhibit sent from us on Monday within the proper allotted of, of time. Uh, it was sent to Dr. Richard Coons, it was sent to Director Kim Hunter, and it was also sent to Ms. Carol Roberson. And I was wondering if you guys actually received that document as an exhibit for this discussion today. I didn't receive the item. It may be in my, maybe in my email, but... Um, um. It's basically what my speech is based off of, so you'd be able well, to... Well, you, can, you can hand it to staff. Um, and then okay. so we so we did have them available unfortunately they weren't given to you okay but well, we will okay you're going to go over this as you yes are well aware we can't hand a copy of this to commissioners McHugh or Stewart oh, so you'll have Correct. We, we do have the ability, sir, to put it in their mailboxes at the so. local office. <coughs> or send it by email if that's possible as well, yes. since everyone else has already received. Yeah, well, I, I'm just saying you can, if you are going to go over this, that's fine, but we have no other way of giving this to them tonight. I understand so. completely. Yes, sir. Um, so, Thank you uh, for giving me the chance to speak to you uh, tonight on behalf of American Cannabis Partners. Uh, first, let me say that we at ACP appreciate Hayfork and Trinity County for the business and personal relationships we have made over the past year. It is rewarding, after months of deliberation, both corporate and per for both corporate and personal reasons, to have placed ACP in Trinity County for our corporate headquarters. We daily take on our civic responsibilities to raise our families along your families, to support local businesses, to volunteer in community programs, and to share the same challenges together. Over the past couple of months, our board of directors and legal counsel have put tremendous amounts of thought into our applications. It follows that we are most disappointed that the Trinity County Planning Department denied our first variance application. To be frank and candid, on a personal level, I do not consume cannabis in any form. I and our experts observe, and many studies show, repetitive scientific evidence regarding the benefits of cannabis for medicinal use. The healthcare benefits far outweigh the recreational, and that is one of the main purposes we are in this business. ACP has multiple experts, including doctors, affiliated specifically for this purpose. With that being said, this county has an opportunity. And the only way for us to succeed is to square up and face the facts of reality. 
Timber and mining in Trinity County are gone. There is no expectation of timber and mining industries or opportunities coming back in the near future. I am from Savannah, Georgia, a tourism dependent city. Trinity tourism is essentially non-existent other than the occasional visitors for our natural beauty. There are no theme parks, no world wonders, no retail hotspots, no commercial staples. There is no income generation that can get Trinity County to the revenues that this general law county needs for essential services such as first responders, hospitals, schools, or the infrastructures needed for Trinity to catch up to the surrounding counties like Humboldt. It has been proven year after year that bonds and grants are not the answer. And in the current environment, bonds and grants may not even be available. Fact is Trinity County is the second poorest county in California by median household income of $36,000. How sad is that reality when there's so much opportunity in front of us? Cannabis has been in California and Trinity County for decades, and the general law of California is in place to make sure cannabis as a business in California, will not go away. Other contiguous counties, like Humboldt, have taken advantage of the tax revenues, fees, and licensing from cannabis. Why are you, as the county officials, waiting to bring resisting legal cannabis revenues to Trinity County? Currently, Trinity County is overrun with illegal operations, confusing ordinances, transparent political agendas, and publicly reported allegations of corruption, all in the administration and oversight of cannabis. ACP is different. We have executed our cannabis operations correctly. We at ACP have followed every law, believe in law and order, advocate tirelessly for what is right, invested millions of dollars in legal investments, and have a strategic business plan to bring $20 million plus of revenue into our base of corporate operations over the next three years. With such revenues, we support, and I say this as clearly as I can, we support paying a cannabis tax to build Trinity County's coffers and support a ripple growth effect throughout and benefit Trinity's economic system. We interpreted the planning board's rejection of our variance application as a message to take our tax dollars and community imperative to a neighboring county. We hope you did not mean that and do not intend to endorse that. To end on a high note, our bottom line is clear, legal commercialization. We are willing to help lead the way as both corporate and operations examples in this legal cannabis industry. We are already supporting Trinity County financially without regret, and with our compliance, we feel our application should be approved today by this commission. Our board and our investors have certain expectations are sophisticated and not naive. If the planning department's message is expand legal cannabis operations anywhere but in Trinity County, then they have instructed ACP management and operations to minimize our activity and our footprint in Trinity and limit our Trinity County operation to its only current location. ACP's board and investors have said that if we are not welcome, then, focus on, then we will focus on another willing county that wants to play ball and wants our business. I stand before you advocating for your support of our immediate future investment into and collective community commitment to Trinity and rely on this expansion. Given uh, the comments by Ms. Hunter, uh, respectfully, um, we do not agree with her comments and we also feel that the comments given in the exhibit by us as well as her own staff report that the statements made tonight were not made in full on that document. Our property, currently as it sits, is fully licensed. We have, filed in, we have filed in every way compliant possible. We did not have the first seed of cannabis on our property until we had both the county 
and state license in hand. We have spent a lot of time and effort into this county and would like to be reciprocated by allowing us to open operations at a larger scale in which we can and bring an economic boost to this county which no one in this government has been able to do. With that, I yield my time. Thank you. Okay. We will open to public comment. We're, we're still in public comment for agenda item number three. Yes, I would like to make a public comment. Uh, Ilya Makar from Witherville. Um, I didn't want to interrupt the gentleman, and uh, but I don't think anybody over the phone heard anything. And uh, um, I would like to have the uh, maybe the gentleman can distribute the printing copy of his speech for public to understand better. Thank you. Thank you. We can be sure to get that posted online tomorrow. Okay. Um, anyone else want to comment on yes. it? Yes, go ahead. Hello, I'm Kelly Alby, Douglas City. Um, I think that the staff and the commission and the Board of Supervisors has worked very hard to create the ordinances that we currently have and the rules that we have that are based on uh, cumulative and um, you know, effects for all, and I would like to state that I think you should uphold the staff decision um, because they are the ones that have collected all the information, and, and this is going outside of what we have spent all these the last three years um, working towards and, and working on. Um, while I encourage um, a, a corporation as they as they plan, um, you know, to come and be part of the industry here. Um, that also the, these rules have been in place for a while. It wasn't that you come in, you know, they're coming in now and are trying to help create them. Um, this is what's been here, and so we ask that they have help by participating in what we have already set up as a community, and um, and we wish them success with that. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to support a lot of what Victoria Alvia has just said. I think this is the granting of a special privilege, and for those of us who have enough program for the entirety of its existence, and for those of us who helped develop the program from its inception, I think this is an abrogation against the will of the county, and uh, should continue to follow the recommendations of the planning department. Uh, I, I agree strongly that there recommendations and please vote to to continue to deny this request. This would throw the entire ordinance in the ditch and leave all of the people who that participated in this sensible inspection. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you. Also I have been trying to call in since about five minutes before this meeting began and only just now was able to get through so this type of meeting is not necessarily the best way of of, uh, of dealing with this really complicated scenario, so although I don't believe this is one of the best the scenario. Thank you. Thank you. This is Dave Alvey. I would like to speak. Go ahead. Yes, thank you. I, I, I want to echo the last two speakers. I believe that the county has uh, put forth a, a huge amount of effort to um, both uh, uh, take into account non growers, growers, uh, ecological concerns and uh, as a business major in college I knew to do a business plan and would not have thought uh, anywhere near buying 23 acres when it's obvious 50 acres was required for just one license not three it seems to me that this company is just trying to lean on a uh, small government to uh, you know get their way and uh, that will probably be what would be the rest of the tenure here would be them trying to dominate. Um, but all said, we have the ordinances in a lot of the place and they need to be adhered to. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, 
This is Justin Hawkins from Hayfork. Go ahead. Hi. Um, well, I just wanted to, um, I guess, support almost everybody I just heard speak and uh, agree that we should support the staff recommendation to deny the appeal. Um, to be honest with you, having been there since the inception of our program, this seems like a clear attempt to kind of change the rules, if you will. And while I think I heard, it was really hard to hear the speaker just now, um, the first public comment, the applicant. I think he heard something about like the opinion that we wouldn't be playing ball if we didn't agree with them. And I gotta tell you, like that couldn't anything be further from the truth. And I think what's going on is we're having corporate interests show up here that are wanting to change the rules now. And in fact, if I recall correctly, in January, this company gave a presentation to the Board of Supervisors and where they basically tried to buy off to commit the supervisors to change the rules. And so I, I ask you, please uh, go ahead and support the denial of this request. It's clearly outside the bounds of our ordinance and what everyone's worked so hard for. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, hearing none, we will bring item three back to the commission. Yes. I I am not in favor of uh, of granting their appeal. I strongly feel that that uh, this this appeal should be denied. We have, as everybody else has said, we have rules and regulations in place. It's one thing to grant a variance based on a 350 foot setback. It's another thing to completely change some very, some ordinances that we thought about for a long time and, um, and made thinking that they were the best for Trinity County. I, I don't like, I don't like the idea of what, of three acres on 23 out of 23, you know, we clearly said that the largest road had to be on 50 acres. And it, it would be a grant of special privilege and, and it would be a precedent that we should not set. Thank you. Would you like to put that in the form of a motion? Sure, I, I'm happy to do that. I would like, I'm sorry. Okay, Commissioner Horton also would like yes, to Yes, I'd, I'd like to make a comment if I would, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, I do appreciate the investment that ACP desires to make to Trinity County. However, I do support Director Hunter's discretion based on established ordinances and methodologies. And there's one more point I would like to make, that despite agreeing with the Director's decision to deny the application, I do not agree that one of them should be based on not having submitted a project application. In the past, the commission has reviewed variances without applications, and I do not believe that there is anything injurious about this. It is a tool that the applicant can use to explore the feasibility of a project application. Furthermore, after reviewing Section 31 of the zoning ordinances, I see nothing that requires that, the project, that a project application shall supersede or be a requirement for the application of a variance. So I do encourage the commission and staff to allow variances to come forward if, if all else as a feasibility tool for an applicant to see if they can move forward a project or not. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else from the commission? Nothing? Okay. Uh, any motions? This is Commissioner Stewart. I will move that we deny the appeal by American Canvas Partners. Do I need to say anything else? I think that's I think that's sufficient. Um, do we have a motion? Do we have a second? I'll second the motion. A motion and a second. Commissioner 
Commissioner Ward? Aye. Commissioner McHale, how do you vote? Aye. Chair Fraser, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Stewart, how do you vote? Aye. And Commissioner Matthews, how do you vote? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Okay. We will move on to item number four. Staff. Kim Hunter, Building and Planning Director again. Uh, this item, a memorandum, a second memorandum. Actually, my, actually it's one might have been the first in this case. Uh, a memorandum went out um, on April 22nd. Um, and then again. Okay, we have we have people on the on the phone, so need to mute again. Okay. Yes, this is agenda item four. This is Kim Hunter giving a presentation. Uh, there were two memos. One went out on April twenty second uh, with comments, and then a memo went out and is posted online. That went out this afternoon. Um, staff does recommendation recommend uh, continuation of this item as well to the May 14th, 2020 meeting. Um, there, um, we received numerous comments and concerns. The public not being able to be present for this item. So, staff re recommends that the planning commission take the following actions: one, open the public hearing, and two, close the public hearing and make a motion to continue agenda item, excuse me, it says two in the memo, but it should be four, uh, to the May 4th uh, meeting, excuse me, May 14th, 2020 meeting. I, I apologize. Thank you. <clears throat> do we have an applicant, uh, do we have an applicant in the room for this item or an agent? Hello, there's no applicant in the room. She's probably on the phone. Yes. Hello? Here she is. Okay, so do we have an, we have an agent on, or an applicant on the phone? Go ahead. Applicant on the phone. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, good evening. Uh, I don't know if you hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, good evening. Uh, my name is Dino Genovic. I'm the applicant for the license number 618. Uh, first, I hope everyone is doing very good and staying healthy during this pandemic. Um, I am on the favor of continuing item number four until May 14th. Uh, I just wanted to tell you that. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Would anyone on the phone like to comment on whether on the continuance of item number four? Hello? Yes. Uh, my name is Mish Haiban. Uh, I'm an agent for uh, Dino Brenovic, and uh, uh, we would like to continue the, the public uh, hearing also until May 14th meeting because the meeting, uh, this teleconferencing is uh, very difficult to hear and understand what everybody is saying, and uh, we support the planning department's recommendation to continue the call meeting until May 14th. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, this is Justin Hawkins from Mayport. Yes, sir. I, uh, I'd also like to um, urge the commissioners to support a continuance on this item. Um, this is a very complex item, and I, I think that uh, these aren't really public hearings we're having right now, so uh, it would be best if we could wait until we get all meet in public. That would be, uh, I think, the most appropriate. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anyone else on the phone? Okay, bringing it back to the commission. Uh, commissioners? I'll make a motion to continue this item to the May 14th meeting of the Planning Commission. I will second. Okay, we have a motion and a, motion and a second. Richard Horde, how do you vote? Aye. Mike McHugh. Commissioner McHugh. 
I vote aye. McHugh votes aye. Chair Frazier? Aye. Commissioner Stewart? Commissioner Stewart? Aye. Aye. Commissioner Matthews? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. All right, moving on to item number five. Stop. This is, uh, can you, yeah, this is Associate Planner Bella Hedke. Um, at the request of the consultant, staff now recommends that this item be continued to the May 14th Planning Commission meeting. Uh, the memo you received said undetermined date, but we've decided on May 14th. Um, and because this item was publicly noticed, we recommend that you conduct a public hearing, close the public hearing, and then continue the item to May 14th. Thank you. And the uh, consultant and applicant is in the room tonight. All right. Um, would the consultant or the applicant like to speak at this time about the continuation? Good evening. Lisa Wright with Flora. Um, we support the continuation to allow time for some factual information to be presented um, in response to the um, allegations submitted by the neighbor that we believe are unfounded. So I support the continuation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we will open item number five up to public comment on the continuation to May 14th. Anyone care to comment? Hearing none, we'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioners? Um, is there any other public comments in the room, possibly? Any other, anyone in the room who would like to public comment on this item? I see none there either. Commission? I make a motion, this is Commissioner Hoard, I make a motion to uphold staff's recommendation to continue agenda item number five, number five to the May 14th meeting of the Planning Commission. I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Commissioner Hoard, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner McHugh? Aye. Chair Frazier? Aye. Commissioner Stewart? Aye. Commissioner Matthews? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. All right. We will move on to item number six. Uh, again, this is Associate Planner Bella Hedke. Uh, this is an initial annual commercial cannabis cannabis variance request uh, for a property that is located at 159 Rose Lane in Hayfork. The applicant is requesting a reduction of the residential setback from 350 feet to 125 feet from the parcel identified as APN 017-430-3300. Staff received one concerned public comment regarding this project from a residence that is located outside of the 350-foot setback. Staff was able to research their questions, provide answers that seem to remedy most, or if not all, of their concerns. Additionally, the applicant has agreed to reduce their designated area in order to meet the 350-foot setback from an additional residence, which also reduces the distance from the na concerned neighbor. With the addition of conditions number six and number seven, staff was able to justify all required findings and recommend approval. The applicant's consultant, Deborah Riesling, is here to answer any site-specific questions that you may have. Okay, we will start with the consultant. Hi there. I'm Deborah Riesling, and I'm just here to um, answer any questions or uh, accept any comments that you have to offer. Commissioners, do you have any questions for the consultant? I do not. I do not. 
Commissioner McHugh, do you have any questions for the consultant? No, I do not. All right, thank you. I think we're Are we good. I think we're good. Um, okay. That will open up the public comment on agenda item number six. Would anyone on the phone like to comment on agenda item number six? All right, hearing none, we'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioners, questions, comments? Yes, uh, Commissioner Fraser, or Chair Fraser, if I may. Uh, I'm encouraged to see that the applicant has moved forward in facilitating conversation and moving their garden to uh, allow uh, to allow one setback. And um, I like the fact that uh, it seems like all the concerns from Charlie Mark Gamlin has been addressed or mitigated at the moment. Um, I, I do support moving forward with this variance. Thank you. Any other? Yes, I, I agree. Um, I, I applaud the applicant for uh, making some positive moves, and, uh, and I, I agree that we should be moving forward with it. Okay. Um, would anyone be interested in making that as a motion? I will do so. I move that we approve the commercial cannabis variant CCV-20-01 to reduce the cultivation set site setback in Trinity County Code 17.43.050.8.8 from 350 feet to 125 feet from the residence located on APN 017-430-33-00 subject to the findings of fact and conditions as stated in the staff, staff report. We have a motion. I will second. We have a motion and a second. Commissioner Ward, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner McHugh? You vote aye. Chair Frazier? Aye. Commissioner Stewart? Aye. Commissioner Matthews? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, moving on. Planning Commissioner reports. Um, any matters from the commission? Chair Frazier, if I may. Um, it, this, needless to say, tonight was somewhat frustrating, and with the uh, agenda items that have been continued, they seem very, very much in the need to have open public comment and regular meetings being conducted to fully address people's concern, not only from the applicant, but from the community at large. And um, I, I really don't feel that the current medium that we're using is going to handle these appropriately. I really hope that by the May 14th meeting we are able to conduct full meetings, regular meetings like we normally do. And if that is not the case, I, I would not be opposed to postponing them even further, maybe perhaps a special meeting at the end of the May until we are able to meet like we normally do. Well, that's just a suggestion. Any other concerns or from Planning Commission comments? Yeah, this is uh, with you. Yes, sir. I would concur with Commissioner Ford. I think these cell conferences are absurd in uh, terms of the ability both for the public and the commission and staff to participate. We need a better solution to this. I'm very skeptical that we will be back in normal mode by May 14th, given what we're reading in the media about how fast things are going to open up. Uh, it's possible we may have to have a meeting at the Veterans Hall with six foot social distancing or 
some of it pollution, but it's very unlikely that they will fill the uh, library conference room with people who want to comment on these uh, controversial items by May 14th. Um, just thought on that. A second point I would like to make, a question for Kim. Uh, we have had input uh, multiple times from the podium. In fact, in the minutes we reviewed tonight, it was Matt Tatum commenting on the gravel pit in Junction City operating out of compliance with the use permit. We heard this time again. Um, and uh, I'm just wondering if there's any progress on that one, uh, if we received any direct communication uh, from the from anyone that's all to see if there's any progress on the issue that the brought to the commission time and again. Commissioner McHugh, I was having a little bit of trouble hearing you. Was this regarding, um, you, say, you said junction, junction City, and this was wh which? I, I, the Smith Pit. Yeah, Smith, Smith Pit, okay. okay. I thought so. Um, yes, we, yeah. we continue to get um, comments from the public about uh, noise complaints, traffic complaints, um, and uh, I have spoke with the operator um, and owner, uh, Jeb Buick, several times. Uh, he uh, feels that uh, corrections have been made to to the issues that were causing concern and well uh, many comments uh, and and ongoing frustration with the nearby nearby community, including uh, Junction City Elementary School as well. Um, and so uh, this is an, another item that should it be um, placed on the agenda that definitely need to wait until have a public meeting uh, so there is things happening on our end working with the operator and and um, the community but uh, at this point it'll have to wait for a meeting with the public Commissioner McHugh does that answer your question it does thank you for the update I mean the Commission is not in the enforcement business I realize that's long to go for but I appreciate getting updates but you'll hear about it periodically Yes, I'll report on that in the future. Uh, any other anything from the commission? All right. Uh, from staff, anything special? Uh, yes. Um, when I, I failed to uh, introduce our new deputy director, this is Lozier, during public comment. I apologize for that. Um, and so, yes, we have Lisa on board, uh, 16 years with Shasta County, uh, three years with the city, a small city, in Arizona, city of Holbrook, town of Holbrook. City of Holbrook. City of Holbrook. <laughs> okay. uh, we're very pleased to have her on board. Uh, Lisa and Bella will be focusing on planning, uh, the planning program, uh, development projects, uh, lot line adjustments, uh, conditional use permits, parcel maps, getting caught up in the planning projects, and I will be focusing on department management as a department head of the Environmental Health, Building and Planning, and Cannabis Divisions, uh, environment, more environmental uh, type issues, uh, and um, cannabis. I'll be overseeing cannabis, and we are um, have been short-staffed. We're starting to fill positions again. We're very excited about that. There's been some um, holes put on the cannabis program, and uh, and all around. Uh, inspections are being put on hold right now for cannabis sites. We hope to resume those in May, but also, you know, very carefully as staff comes on board and uh, looking out for the safety of our crew with, with, you know, being out in the field and COVID-19. So lots going on. It's exciting. I'm uh, very pleased to have Lisa here. Welcome. Thank you very much. And that's it. Okay, with that... We will be adjourned at 8.23.